How do we find the time to stay up to date and current in an environment that's constantly evolving and constantly changing? It's a question I'm asked all the time and to be honest, there is no easy answer. The web changes at a phenomenal rate and keeping up to date can feel like a full-time job. For me, keeping up to date is only achievable because I have a workflow that streamlines the process and ensures that I get the most out of what it is that I'm reading. Over the next couple of minutes, I wanna share with you the process that I use in the hopes that it might help you too. It basically consists of three phases, gather, process, and act. And we're gonna look at each in turn. The first step in staying current is to work out what it is you need to know. And I achieve that in a few ways. First, I subscribe to numerous RSS feeds from key publications that I scan using an application called Feedly each evening or so. Second, I follow industry experts on Twitter and keep an eye out for any articles that they post. Now you have to work your way through a lot of other stuff, but it is worth it for those occasional gems. The problem with these two approaches, however, is that they can leave you in a filter bubble. This means you can miss out on valuable content because it isn't discussed within your normal circles, within your normal sources. To combat this problem, I use an app called Zite on the iPad. Instead of subscribing to specific people or sites, you subscribe to topics and Zite presents you with the content relating to those topics, drawing from a wide range of sources. It's effectively my wild card that enables me to hear from people that are outside of my normal network. I regularly scan each of these sources looking for potentially interesting content, and when I find it, I save it for later processing. When I find something useful, I inevitably end up putting it in Pocket. I use Pocket over the competition like Insta, um, Instapaper for a couple of reasons. First, Pocket supports video, which the competitors don't. But secondly, it also does a great job at drawing my attention to the more important content that I have saved. With my content now in Pocket, I work my way through the articles and videos whenever I've got a spare moment. It might be reading them on my iPad while I'm sitting in bed, or it might be on my phone when I'm waiting for a train. The idea is to identify whether or not what you have collected is worth your time. I'm merciless and bin articles that don't live up to that initial scan. There is far too much content out there to waste time on posts that have little value. When I do find something interesting, I don't just wanna read it and then forget it. I want to integrate what I've learned into my job. And that means that everything that I read, I need to take some kind of action with. Now, one action might be to delete an article. Much of what I read is either stuff I already know or is poor quality or is just not relevant to me. I try to filter out those on the gather stage, but some things sneak through, and as soon as I realize something has snuck through, I will stop reading it, I will bin it, and I will move on to something else. If something does prove to be useful, I tend to do one or more of three things with it. I keep it for future reference, I take some kind of action on it, or I share it with others. Now, some things you cannot uh, you read, but you cannot immediately apply them to your situation. They might prove useful reference material at some point in the future, but right now they have little value. Typically, this will include a great snippet of code you might want to use in the future, or a useful quote or a compelling statistic. This kind of content needs saving somewhere which you reference regularly, the thing is, if you don't reference that source regularly, then it just becomes a black hole in which you pour useful content. In my case, that place is Evernote. I have many reasons for using Evernote, not least of which is the fact that you can easily send content from Pocket to Evernote. However, probably the biggest reason that I use Evernote is the fact that the results appear alongside my Google searches. This means that when I search on something in Google, I will also get any pieces of relevant information that I've saved to Evernote. And that stops the content from being saved and then forgotten about. 
Other content I read needs a more immediate action. And I have a, a number of different ways of dealing with that kind of content. Maybe it's an action where I want to discuss it with a client or I want to implement that technique or I want to contact the author. Whatever it is, I need to add it to my task list. Now, I'm a big getting things done fan, so if the task only takes a couple of minutes, I tend to do it immediately. If it takes any longer than that, it goes into my task manager, which is something called OmniFocus. However, probably the most common action I take on, a, uh, on something that I've read is to share it with my social networks. Now, because I'm involved in a number of different platforms, I tend to use Buffer for this job. Not only does it allow me to post to multiple networks simultaneously, it will also spread my posts so that people aren't bombarded with links if one evening I sit down and read a load of articles that I then want to share. Finally, Buffer is integrated into Feedly and into Pocket, making it incredibly easy to post. We work in an industry where information overload is inevitable. There is just so much content being put out there and we need to be absolutely ruthless in our efficiency of dealing with it. We need to ignore the majority of stuff, cull the weakest of what is left and process what remains as fast as possible. And for that, we need a good workflow and hopefully my workflow will help you.